Hello chess lovers, I'm so excited for what I'm about to reveal to you guys. It is not my birthday and I don't care. This is about a very unpopular gambit yet so powerful that you can use against the French defense. No ads, no sponsors, no jokes, no elbows, but only e4. Then Black will respond with e6, the French defense. One thing about French players that you should know you guys is that they know their theory very well. Same with Karakan players. So I recommend taking them out of the book a little bit. Go d4, they're still going to play d5. I'm not going to recommend any of the highlighted moves on the board. This is not the video about pawn to c4, which I covered in the video that has popped up in the card above. Go and watch that after you finish watching this one. We're not interested to play knight c3 or knight d2 or pawn to e5 or bishop d3 or pawn to f3. The move that I recommend you guys is bishop e3. <laughs> this is called the alapine gambit you guys. This has also been played in OTB classical games as shown in the masters database. You can see for yourselves. So don't be afraid. Bishop e3 primarily stops pawn to c5 which most French players like playing. So bishop takes e4 is what everybody plays and believe it or not you guys queen d3 in this position is not the idea. You simply go knight d2. Black can never defend the e4 pawn without losing something big in return. As you can see and a leech starter base, knight to f6 is by far the top played move, then followed by pawn to f5 and knight d7. So this is what I'm going to cover in this video. So if black plays knight to f6, your plan is very simple. You play pawn to c3 and queen c2, then fianchero your light squared bishop after pawn to g3. But the reason for starting with pawn to c3 is to prepare for an early long side castle given a chance. We don't want to be castling short in most of the times. So pawn to c3 is what you should begin with. And here the most played move is pawn to b6. So white is preparing to go bishop b7. According to theory, pawn to b6 equals pawn to g3. So that's what we do before playing queen c2. And after bishop b7 you go bishop g2. So what we are doing is developing all our pieces based on black spawn on e4. So again the top played move as you can see is knight bd7. Preparing to go c5 next. And here is where I recommend going queen c2. Attacking black spawn three times. There is no any sensible way for black to hold on to his pawn on e4. So they are going to play something like c5. Now wait for the traps you guys. Don't go. You simply go knight takes e4 here. Taking back your pawn. And after knight takes e4, again the top played move. You take back with your light squared bishop. And again the top played move is bishop takes e4. After which you take back with your queen. And if c takes d4, which everyone plays, you now take back with your bishop. Because c takes d4 is a position of mistake, you guys. It's hardly easy for black to even develop his dark squared bishop. Because we can simply take on g7, right? So they mostly play knight f6, attacking our queen, but... This is a blunder because we can just take that knight. And if queen takes f6, we take the free rook on a8. So they have to take this bishop with their g pawn, messing up their pawn structure. After which we simply go rook d1, attacking black's queen. And so black has to play queen c8. After which we go queen a4 check, making our opponent lose the right to castle. And then go knight f3. Next we are going to castle short and continue pressurizing black until he suffocates. This is not the French defense that you guys see on TV. <laughs> Anyways, so once again, after c takes d4, which is a position of mistake, and bishop takes d4, instead of black playing knight to f6, allowing us to do this, well, they may also consider playing something else like rook c8 here, just removing their rook from danger. But remember what I said, the whole idea is to castle long as early as we can. Again, black is finding it difficult to develop his bishop because we can take on g7 with our dark squared bishop. So knight f6 once again is what everybody plays after which we take that free knight and also attacking the queen on d8. So black has to take with his queen. Sadly enough, there's a mate in four in this position, which I would like you guys to find and leave your answers in the comment section down below because I want to learn of your existence as well, just to ensure that they don't just talk to robots or chat GPT. I mean, all right, let's move on. So back to this position where we just play queen c2, attacking black spawn on e4 three times. And remember, this is where I said black can play c5 immediately because what else can they do? 
after which you tap back on e4, you equalize material and this time you may not see knight takes e4 because that just simplifies things a lot. So you see black taking on d4 which is a blunder you guys. By playing this gambit you will increase more chances for your opponents to blunder. So knight takes f6 is what I recommend instead of taking back on d4. So first of all take on f6 because that's check and after knight takes f6 you simply take black's bishop on b7 threatening to win his rook next if rook b8 by black we can simply go bishop c6 check first of all saving our bishop and then take on d4 so that's why in this position you are going to see your opponents giving up their rook for the bishop but equally you can still go bishop c6 before taking the rook black has to move his king and accept to lose his right to castle if knight fd7 we can simply castle long and black cannot stop this coming attack with his elbow or his toes anyways so that was all in the knight to f6 line. Let's look at what happens if black plays pawn to f5 instead of knight to f6. So instead of knight to f6, if black plays the immediate pawn to f5, the only thing you need to remember is that pawn to f5 equals to f3. Write this down. Pawn to f5 equals pawn to f3. You want to start the minority attack as soon as you can. If EF, you take back with your G knight, and in this position, there are two most popular moves, knight f6 and knight c6. First, if black plays knight f6, you simply continue with your normal development, bishop c4. But please, you should never think of castling short anytime soon. You should delay castling. At best, you want to castle long. And black normally plays bishop d6, the top played move. You go queen e2, you want to castle long. If they castle short, do the needful. The idea is to start attacking on the king side as soon as we can. If they play c6, maybe they want to go pawn to b5 next. Well, you simply go bishop g5, pinning the knight to the queen. If b5 or if pawn to h6, it doesn't matter. Let's say b5, you simply take on e6 with check first and after bishop takes, queen takes. I mean, this is just winning for white. So this is just how tricky this line can be, you guys. But hey, if they don't play pawn to b5 right away or pawn to a6, allowing us to take on e6, and let's say they play rook e8, defending the e6 pawn twice, well, always think of the minority attack, you guys, pawn to g4. You want to take on f5 because the e6 pawn is pinned to the king. So if they take your pawn, you simply go knight a5, wanting to take back the pawn once again. If they go h5, holding on to their pawn, Think of the minority attack, you heard me. Go pawn to h3. b5, you go bishop b3, maintaining the pin. a5, you can even ignore this attack, you guys, because you have a very quick attack. Look at all this. Bishop takes f6, attacking the queen. So the queen has to take, after which you go pawn to g5, attacking the queen once again. Queen takes g5. Then you go rook takes h5, attacking the queen. Queen f6. Then you go queen h2, wanting to mate on h8, so they have no time to take on b3. So they have to play something like bishop takes e5, you take back with your pawn attacking the queen, queen g6, you go knight e4. They have no time to take your bishop you guys, otherwise they are just going to lose the game in this style. There's nothing that black can do here, there's mate in 5, absolutely nothing. Just rook h8 and knight d6 mate. Anyways, still in the pawn to f5 line instead of knight f6. Now this time after we play pawn to f3, pawn takes and knight gf, black may ignore knight to f6 and instead go knight c6 this time. Well, same story, just go bishop c4 once again. And after knight to f6, this may just transpose to one of the lines that we looked at in the last variation. You delay castling and go queen e2. You want to castle long, given a chance. And if bishop d6, you simply castle long, black is gonna castle short. And once again, you are back to the same story. You go rook he1 this time. Remember, you can also go pawn to h3 and start the minority attack, but rook e1 is also an option. And after rook e8, you can simply play for tactics here. You go knight e5, knight takes, d takes, bishop takes, then bishop g5, indirectly attacking the bishop. Because if bishop takes h2 or bishop d6, you simply go pawn to g4, just opening up some more lines. If f takes g4, you go knight e4 opening up some more lines and you can see things are already bad for black here i don't even know the better move that black should play here this game is already winning and there's even a funny mate here where you play rook g1 after king h7 and if black plays rook g8 the simplest is to go knight takes f6 
check because if queen takes f6 you have a mate coming on g8 and if king h8 you can simply give up your queen and go for mate on g8 anyways let's look at the last line all right so we just covered the knight to f6 line and the pawn to f5 line the last possible line that you may see in this position is knight d7 well with knight d7 black has just given you back the ball just take back the pawn on e4 now this is no longer a gambit you have equal number of pieces position is back to 0.5 in favor of white and so knight gf6 is the top played move here if you see this i recommend just taking that knight simplify the game and because black can play pawn to e5 after bishop d6 in some lines i recommend playing knight f3 in this position if bishop d6 you simply go bishop d3 again you delay castling short and go for castle long on the next move but hey black just played knight d5 attacking your dark squad bishop if you have a chance to save your dark squad bishop do that bishop g5 attacks the queen and also provokes a weakness pawn to f6 after which you now go bishop d2 you save your dark squared bishop with tempo if knight to f4 double attacking your queen and the light squared bishop well you have this deadly combination that black didn't see bishop takes knight and after bishop takes you simply go queen e4 attacking the bishop and also eyeballing the h7 square so black has to play bishop h6 saving his bishop and then you take on h7 with check and if king f7 you go castle short i mean because you cannot castle long there's a bishop covering the c1 square so if rook h8 you go queen g6 check king e7 rook fe1 you just start playing your chess on the center and use your mind to come up with different tactics not just memorizing moves anyways so whenever you see knight d5 if you have a chance to save your bishop pair you can do that one more time but this time black may not play knight a4 which is a position of mistake they may play pawn to c5 which is very common in this line what i recommend doing is playing pawn to c4 if you can attack a piece on d5 and after knight b6 you simply go pawn to b4 there's a little trap here you guys after c takes d4 you go c5 forking the knight and the bishop on d6